Well, science may help a Georgia man finally resolve something that's taken 46 years to prove that he is not a rapist. Well, that's compelling enough, but it's only half of this story. As Fox 5 item reporter Randy Travis reveals, new DNA technology could also point authorities to a new suspect for this terrible crime. That's right, Sonia Rush. Yeah, this happened a long time ago. Richard Nixon was president. Jimmy Carter was Georgia's governor when two men raped a teenage girl south of Atlanta. Police were convinced they had one of them, even got a conviction one based solely on the eyewitness testimony of the victim. I've been fighting up for 46 years. I've never stopped fighting, man. The years may be lost and turning gray, but the fight clearly remains for 66-year-old Terry Wanzer. Once convicted of rape, given a double life sentence, only to be eventually pardoned and compensated. But as you'll see, some wrongs can never truly be made right, at least perhaps not without science. I-75 has changed a lot since that July night 46 years ago. According to her testimony, a teenage girl says she was driving home with her aunt when two white men pulled up alongside and warned that her tire was going flat. She says when she pulled over to take a look, the men pulled up behind. One of them jumped out with a gun, ordered her aunt out of the car, and then got behind the wheel. The men would eventually take their 17-year-old victim to a secluded spot near Lake Spivey where they would rape and sodomize her. Neither man wore a mask or gloves. In fact, the victim said the man with the gun even introduced himself, said his name was Terry. A detective said he knew a young man named Terry who lived in the area. So he found Terry Wanzer's mugshot from a petty crime a few years earlier and mixed it in with others. The victim picked out Wanzer's photo. She also identified his voice when he came down to meet with police. Did you think the victim was going to clear you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I didn't think this was going to take but a minute and we'll be done with this and something to talk about later on. His trial would come just a few months later. Terry had three alibi witnesses. The rapist's car did not match his. Neither did the rapist's clothes. The state's case consisted primarily of the victim's testimony. No fingerprints. Yet Wanzer would be convicted on all counts and sent to notorious Reedsville State Prison. Two life sentences plus two 20 year sentences. Did you think you'd never leave prison alive? I kept thinking every minute you know, that a miracle was going to happen, every second, uh, something, you know, they're going to find out the truth. I, that's how stupid I am. But Terry did get a miracle. It came in the form of a legal aid attorney who heard about his case. The lawyer wrote the Pardons and Paroles Board asking them to review the conviction since it was based on eyewitness testimony and no scientific evidence. Board members ordered a new investigation, interviewing witnesses and even using something that's not admissible in court. They asked Dixie Foster to give Wanzer a polygraph. I've seen enough deception. And after talking to this young fellow right here for a short period of time, innocent as heck, when I told people outside waiting for me what I had just uncovered, I was furious at the destruction of this man's life. After eight years in prison, Wanzer would be granted parole. In 1991, it would get even better. The board granting him a pardon for reason of innocence, only the second time ever. Board members unanimously have concluded from the evidence that Wanzer's conviction resulted from a tragic mistaken identification. We want to try to make this man whole. In 1996, the Georgia General Assembly voted to pay Wanzer $100,000 as compensation. He was finally a happy man, later using the money to help buy a series of restaurants and bars. And put it behind me. That's what I want. That's what I need. I was blessed, really blessed and thankful until I got sick and, and then I lost everything I had, boo-hoo. A rash of recent heart attacks drained his savings and investments. But he says when he went to apply for a job, employers did their customary background check. And look what came up. I told him I had a pardon for his but they didn't care. The rape remained on Wanzer's record because the Clayton County DA's office never filed a motion to set aside the conviction. Some there at the time still doubting his innocence. So Wanzer searched for one more miracle, and this time it arrived in the form of three capital letters, DNA. The Pardons and Paroles Board knew that both rapists had left behind semen samples, but the science was not sophisticated enough in the early 1990s to compare that DNA to Wanzer's. Last year, the Innocence Project agreed to pay for new testing called STR. The results came back last November. Terry Wanzer is eliminated as a source of semen sperm DNA. So now you've got more than just a polygraph. Oh, yeah, this is the poo-poo, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
This is this is uh, this is God's way of pointing His finger at the innocent and the guilty. I did not commit that crime. Clayton County District Attorney Tracy Graham Lawson says in light of the DNA results, her office is reviewing the entire case file. She won't say whether they will file a motion to remove the rape from Wanzer's record. But there's something else they can do too. You want the DA to reopen the investigation? You betcha. So if Terry Wanzer is innocent of this rape, someone else committed that crime? Yes, sir. And you think you know who it is? Yes, sir, I do. Why do you think that? Because I talked to him. That's right. According to Wanzer's pardon, two other men identified as possible suspects years after the crime failed their lie detector tests. They took the polygraph after the statute of limitations had run out. But in 2010, the General Assembly passed a law eliminating any statute of limitations for rape if DNA could identify a suspect. And they made it retroactive, meaning this rape case could be reopened if prosecutors choose. And we're waiting to see what's going to happen on that. So, Randy, have you been able to talk to either of these other suspects? Well, one of them has since died, but we did track down the other man earlier this week. We're not going to name him, but uh, he denies having any involvement in the rape. And when I asked him, well, would you contribute a, a sample, your DNA, for examination, he mm -hmm. said yes. So we'll find out if uh, Clayton County prosecutors will do that. Well, it's just fascinating. I hope that this will be finalized for Terry. I mean, in my mind, the DNA is, is pretty clear. Is, is there anything that's going to hold this back, potentially? Only the Clayton County District Attorney's Office. They have to be the ones to, to file a motion to set aside the conviction. And they've got a victim who we asked them to reach out to her to let her know about these test results. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and we heard back that, that she still believes she got the right guy. Wow. So if that's the case, it maybe may, may, may put prosecutors in a very difficult spot should they reopen a, uh, an investigation, reopen a crime, when the victim thinks she got the right guy all along. Hmm. It definitely will be interesting and hopefully worth Clayton County taking another look at. We'll let you know. Thank you so much, okay. Randy.